Hello and welcome to our Batfish demo series, where we showcase key capabilities of Batfish and how they might be used as a part of your automation workflow. My name is Dan, and I will be presenting an introduction to forwarding analysis using Batfish. Analyzing how the network forwards packets is one of the most common tasks for network engineers. Typically, it is performed by running trace route between multiple sources and destinations and debugging the results. This process is highly complex, even in a moderately sized network. It also fails to provide strong assurance, as only some of the source destination pairs and only some of the packets can be feasibly tested. Batfish makes forwarding analysis extremely simple by providing easy-to-use queries over a centralized view of the network with the ability to reason comprehensively about entire spaces of flows. We will begin by initializing a Batfish snapshot with the standard example network. You can see the configs for this network by following the link in the video. In this demo, we will mostly focus on analyzing traffic for AS2 to a DNS server on host 1. We'll study this traffic both within AS2 and from the other autonomous systems into AS2 via the border routers. First, let's use Batfish Smart Traceroute to find the path taken by AS3 core routers to reach the DNS server host 1 in AS2. The essence of Traceroute is two parameters, where the trace starts and what packet is traced. Here we will trace a flow beginning at AS3 Core 1's loopback interface with packet headers configured with the destination IP of host 1. Let's look at the result. The first column shows the specific flow that was traced. The trace starts at AS3 Core 1, and Batfish has automatically populated the source IP of loopback 0 and the destination IP of host 1. By default, Batfish uses standard UDP traceroute, though you can override this choice by changing header constraints. We'll show this later. The traces column includes hop by hop detail for all paths this flow can take through the network. At a high level, the flow starts at AS3 core 1 and crosses from AS3 into AS2 at the border routers. Inside AS2, the flow is distributed through the core and distribution layers, reaches the department server, and then is delivered to the server host 1, where it is blocked by the IP tables rule filter input on ETH0. Traceroute additionally shows the specific rib routes matched. IBGP routes inside of AS3 and inside of AS2, eBGP routes between AS3 and AS2 and between the distribution layer and the department layer. We can also see multipath IBGP, which leads to the four different traces we see in this network. And we can also see that the BGP routes in AS3 are less specific than the BGP routes in AS2 corresponding to aggregation at the border interfaces. Batfish's smart trace route provides detailed information about a specified flow. However, network engineers often need information about all flows, rather than just focusing on a specific packet. For example, we may want to know which of all possible UDP flows can or cannot reach a particular host. It would be infeasible to run trace route across the huge space of possible flows. Instead, Batfish's reachability question is an easy and efficient way to perform exactly this kind of search. We'll search for UDP flows within AS2 destined for host 1. Batfish Reachability found several answers, including that specifically DNS traffic starting at AS2 border 1 will be delivered along four different paths to the host. Note that we did not tell Batfish to specifically start at border 1, nor to use DNS. It found this solution out of all possible flows, and it found similar solutions for other locations inside AS2. We've shown that Batfish can exhaustively search all possible flows to find some flow meeting our constraints. Let's talk about how we can use it for verification to provide strong guarantees about the network's behavior. Suppose we want to verify that DNS traffic will be delivered to host 1 no matter where in AS2 it starts. To confirm this, we ask Reachability to find any DNS flows that will fail. If Reachability finds one, that's a bug, a flow for which DNS is not available. If it finds no results, that's a guarantee. Reachability searched all possible flows, and all of them were delivered. Batfish didn't find any answers, so we know that DNS inside of AS2 is available. Next, let's verify that DNS is the only UDP service reachable on host 1. We do this by searching for any UDP flows accepted by host 1 on ports other than 53. We also relax the source IPs to include any possible source IP address of any node that reaches AS2. Again, Batfish didn't find any answers, so we know that host1 will not accept any UDP traffic other than DNS. 
Next, let's verify isolation in our network, namely that host one's DNS server, which is fully available inside of AS2, cannot be reached by any of the other autonomous systems. We do this by searching for flows that enter the border interfaces of AS2. Unfortunately, we found that DNS server is not isolated from external devices. Specifically, devices can come in AS2 border 1 and then eventually get accepted by the host. In all likelihood, this means we should investigate the outside to inside ACL on the border router and make it block more traffic. We quickly showed that Batfish Reachability can do a comprehensive search with many utilities. It found one flow matching our search. It also proved DNS was available. It proved DNS was secure within AS2 or that the host was secure within AS2. And it found a problem where we were actually not properly isolating DNS from the other autonomous systems. Finally, I'd like to show you an experimental check that can detect an important class of reachability bugs with no user input. Multipath consistency will search all possible packets and all starting locations in the network to find any paths, any flows, where some paths reach the destination and some paths fail. Multipath inconsistencies are almost always bugs and may be a sign that the network is not robust to failures. Our example network is designed to showcase Batfish, so it has several multipath inconsistencies. Here, I'll show you just one. With multipath routing, AS2 core 2 can reach AS2 core 1 either through the border routers or through the distribution layer. The multipath inconsistency check has found that Telnet is blocked from the distribution layer, but not from the border layer due to an inconsistency applied to ACL on the core routers. To recap, we talked about three Batfish checks. Traceroute, which provides detailed hop-by-hop -hop information about all available paths for a flow. Reachability, which searches all possible packets and can provide strong guarantees of security or isolation, or can find bugs and tell you where to look. And the experimental multipath consistency check, which can find cases where flows are treated inconsistently by different paths in the network and are likely not robust to failures. This concludes our demo of forwarding analysis. Don't forget to join our community on Slack and GitHub, where we'd love to help you get started with Batfish, automate your network, and answer any questions you may have. Thanks.